today's parents' new medical advisor here, Dr. Dina Kulik. <laughs> sick kids. You've got a pediatrics practice right here in Toronto and she's got three kids, one, three, and five. That's what I call ambitious. Yeah. Okay. You are very you, busy. Very busy. You are super busy. Mm -hmm. Summer's such a fun time, uh, but the kids are out and about and there are certain things that you want to think about when it comes to summer safety. Absolutely. It could be anything from mosquitoes to ticks to scrapes and bruises. So let's start with just scrapes, cuts, and bruises, what you need to know about that and, and how you need to treat it. Right. So most things are really simple to treat at home. Of course, if you're worried your kid has a broken bone or a really significant deep cut or a puncture or something that's bleeding a lot, you want to see your doctor, obviously. Right. But most things can be dealt with at home. Really simply, washing with soap and water. Everyone has a bar of soap or a little pump thing of soap at home. Uh -huh. um, using a simple Band-Aid or a gauze pad with some medical tape. Really simple things you could have in your arsenal at home just in case you have, you know, simple injuries. Right. People ask all the time whether you should use like an antibiotic ointment. Yeah. In general, these aren't that useful, to be honest, but they do give parents some kind of solace that you're doing something right. to help healing. But really, if you clean with soap and water, that's all you really typically need okay. for, for most injuries. There are special kind of band-aids out there. This one call this one is called a steri strip. Okay. So it's like little tighter bandage than would be a band-aid like this one and this can hold the skin together a little bit more taut oh. and your, your doctor can give you these ones there's also medical grade kind of glue that we can use and of course there's stitches if we ever need it but most okay. things easy to manage at home sprains strains that kind of thing we use the acronym rice so you want to rest the area yeah you want to ice the area and everyone has these fun kind of you know ice things at home mm -hmm. you want to compress the area so using a tensor bandage an ace bandage things like this yeah. and then elevating that area as well so keeping your foot up if you sprain your ankle yes. keeping your arm up if you sprain your wrist and again making sure there's no broken bones do you, at what point would you take a child to the doctor or the mm. hospital if it was a uh, cut, a scrape or a bruise? Right, so scrapes not typically needed. Yeah. Anything that's really deep or if the skin is pulled apart from each other and you see there's like a lot of stuff in between, a lot yes. of tissue in between, obviously that may need to be, you know, closed up by one of us. Yeah. Um, anytime you're really worried, I would say, I think parents should really trust their intuition around their kid's health. Mm -hmm. A lot of parents will be like, I have this gut instinct, something's wrong, you know, they're still walking, but I think there's a broken bone. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things you do want to see your doctor. I noticed you have a helmet out there too. Absolutely. So if they're so in the neighborhood, on their bikes, on their scooters, absolutely. yeah, got to wear a helmet. It's, it's it, right. I mean, it's probably a rule in most municipalities, yeah, is it Yeah, absolutely, not? and it is. And even if it wasn't a rule, I still think it's really important. Yeah. And, and around helmet use, I think using, making sure that our parents are modeling that behavior. Yes. So if you're not role modeling that behavior for your kids, they're not going to want to wear the helmet either. That's right. I so frequently see parents on their bikes without helmets, yeah. the kids are on the bikes with the helmets, and you know, what you're teaching your kid there. So right. everyone should be wearing helmets. The kids are just thinking, as soon as I grow up, I don't yes. need a helmet. That's right. It's like, no, not cool. we all have brains. That's we right. all need helmets yes. too. And there's so many options now. There's so many colors oh, and prints. Yeah. And there's things that, you know, stick up above to make them cooler. Right. So, you know, get your kid interested in it and wanting to wear it. Very cool. Okay, let's talk about bee and wasp stings. Yes. Um, first of all, how do you behave around the bees <laughs> and the wasps? We always tell our kids just chill out and right. be calm. The bees yeah. are not here for you. That's right. Um, but if you happen to get stung. Yeah, absolutely. So simple again, mostly ice is okay. Using over-the-counter kind of medicines for pain, for discomfort is really useful. Okay. If you do find that the stinger is stuck in the skin, which can sometimes happen, you just grab your tr trusty tweezers, uh -huh. go close to the skin, and just pull that right out. So are you the one that does that, or does your husband? Because there's uh, always one in the family, <laughs> that's right? right? That's, that's right. okay with the pulling right, out and the extraction. Right. Yeah. For me, it's my husband. Right. It usually is my husband for things like killing the ants and getting rid yeah. of the mosquitoes from the house. But but as the procedural person who works yeah. at the Emerge, I do like this kind of stuff. That's right. Okay. That's right. Um, and then, you know, protection is really the big thing, right? So yeah. using appropriate, you know, skin protection, DEET-containing solutions. Yes. Any older than six months of age can use a DEET containing solution less than 10% DEET. Okay. So these are safe, these are important, it will keep those mosquitoes, the ticks, the, the wasps and things away from you. Yeah. And then long sleeve you know, clothing. So as much as you can in the heat, mm -hmm. wearing long sleeve pants, long sleeve shirts, really sexy look with putting the, the socks on top and tucking your pant leg inside of it. Ooh, Can't really prevent hot. those, those you know, little insects <laughs> from getting very sexy. It's about the practicality right. though. You, yeah. you want to think about, I mean, think about the folks that go to the cottage or, Absolutely. you know, they go away for the weekend and they're in the bush. I want to talk about ticks because you mentioned Absolutely, them. Yeah. Um, and they can be a tough one. We've been in a situation where we were in Maine and we went to one of the parks and they were saying the ticks are really bad this season. Right. And we went to a different park just because mm. I don't know how to identify them. I don't know what to do if we happen to get 
bit. Right. And and then of course if they're carrying mm -hmm. Lyme disease, your child or yourself, you could get that. That's right. That's right. So ticks tend to hang out in wooded areas. So tall uh -huh. grasses, the woods. If you're hiking or biking in the woods or hanging out at your cottage, those are the areas that they tend to be around the most frequently. So fairly tiny. We're looking at a shot of yeah, one right now. Yeah, they're tiny. They're very tiny. So they're they're teeny tiny things. Yeah. When they bite you, they take blood from you, so they tend to engorge. Mm -hmm. So a tick that's had blood in them yeah. tends to get a lot bigger. Is that and a bite right there that we're seeing in the monitor? That's right. So that's called erythema migrans. That's the kind of rash you get. About 80% mm -hmm. of people will get that kind of rash if they have a tick bite that had Lyme disease in it. Okay. Amongst other things, so we typically see fever, um, irritability, um, uh, headaches, fatigue, those kind of symptoms, really flu-like symptoms with yes. Lyme disease, so non-specific, which is hard. Luckily, about 80% of those people will have that kind of rash, so if you ever see that kind of rash on your child, you do want to see your doctor. There's blood work you can do to make sure there is no Lyme antibodies, and then we do antibiotics if there is. So how quickly do those symptoms present if you've been bitten right. by Typically a within a week or two. Oh, okay. the, the great news is if you do skin checks on your kids each day, like yeah. let's say you're hanging out in wooded areas, yeah. if you do a skin check and you find a, um, a lice, or not a lice, rather, um, a tick there, you can remove it quite simply. Yeah. And if you remove it within 36 hours of being bit, there's actually very, very minimal risk of getting Lyme disease. Okay. So you grab your trusty tweezers, yeah. again, close to the skin. Ideally, you find the mouth part of yeah. the tick and you go right close to it and pull it right out in one fell swoop. Okay. You want to avoid squeezing the body of of, um, of the animal because then it can inject more of the lime containing kind of right. stuff within the body into the skin. Yeah. So you grab the mouth part, pull it right out. And the really important part is you grab a really simple baggie or a container, drop it inside and yeah. bring it to your doctor. Your doctor could then send it off to public health mm -hmm. and see if there is any Lyme disease even there. If there's no Lyme disease, you're good to go. If there's Lyme, we might treat you. That is so interesting. Mm -hmm.